You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob, and this is episode number 464. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us today. We really appreciate it. We do really appreciate it. As, as always. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just like, I wasn't no, done, it's okay. Paul. No, it's okay. I'll, uh, I, I won't complete your sentences anymore. No, no, no. You're, you're good. <laughs> anyway, happy... What is this? This is going on on Friday. Happy weekend before Thanksgiving. Yeah, happy Friday. Happy Friday. Before the weekend. Before I should the seem more excited, but I'm just so exhausted from working so much this week, and there's still so much to do. Yeah, I don't know. It's probably not going to end, Paul. Uh, no, it isn't. But it's but fun. You know what? I'm happy that I'm working for what I want to work for. I'm Absolutely. working with whom I want to, to work with, and uh, frankly, that's how it should be for everyone. I think it's... You know, once you find your love and then you find the right people. and Absolutely, and, and particularly for you, bud, you've got uh, your daily responsibilities, which are on you, and then you still go out and actually fly jobs and well, that's my live the drone life, therapy, as man. they say. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't do Drone You without still doing that just because, you know, well, Drone You is all about experience. But anyway, let, let's move on. Let, I know you guys are living the drone life as well. If you're having trouble getting some jobs in the winter, then you need to check out DroneBase. Go to go.dronebase.com forward slash. Forward slash drone you. That's right. Why? Because if you need some jobs to take care of quickly in your area, just to keep you busy, keep you practicing, or maybe you need some other types of jobs, you've got to check out drone base, sign up with them, and pick up local jobs in your area. This way you can turn your passion into profit. And if you just got your license, this is a great place to start out and start getting work and getting in the workflow and understanding yep. how your systems are going to work. So again, check out go dot drone base dot com forward slash drone you absolutely they've made it really easy for you guys to go uh hop into this business and make a go of it definitely definitely check them out well let's get into today's question rob yeah you know we don't do this very often anymore paul where we actually read a question typically we say send in your voice or it's probably not going to get on the air but i don't know i kind of like this one okay and i wanted to run it by you and get your thoughts so let's go for it all right, I'm just going to read. Okay. Can we, I read? No. Can you? Can I read this one? Uh, no, I'm asking you. Can, can you? A little bit. Okay. I think I can get through this. The, red, right. the redneck uh, you know, look was throwing me off a little bit, so <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's right. So uh, this person wrote in, says, I have a chance to do a facade inspection on a high-rise building. Pretty cool. And we'll be inspecting up to 60 stories of primarily glass and steel facade. Kind of interesting. So he says, I'm experienced in smaller drones, but this would be a big step up for me in hardware. I'm thinking we're going to need a professional unit, like maybe an M600 Pro because of the stability, or, well, I'm actually thinking of using a Zenmuse X5R, thinking that would suffice as the camera for the gig. Any thoughts? What about an Inspire? Could I use an Inspire for something like this? Would just really like your advice on how to go about a job like this. Uh, um, well, I think one thing is for sure, as we get opportunities for new jobs, the, uh, what is it? The tease, the, mm -hmm. the desire to get the best of the best equipment always That's rages true. throughout your excuse. body. You're like, Oh, 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 oh I'm going to get the RTK version of the M600 <laughs> <laughs> when there's like no reason to drop 12 G's on an M600. No um, reason other than it's cool. Yeah. Anyways. I don't know. People are asking why I don't like the M600. It's very clear. It's, uh, I think it's like the uh, hexacopter for phantom flyers because hmm. it's not very agile. It's very stable. It's very good for mapping. Good payload though, right? Yeah, killer payload capacity. But at yeah. the same time, you can't get the bird to move fast uh, quickly. So. so for what you like to do... I mean, that makes sense that you wouldn't like the M600, but yeah. for a job like this where there's not going to be the need for flying real fast. True. Maybe now it works. here And well, here's the thing. 
um, let's let's talk about if we're having to solve this problem in the next month or we're having to solve this problem next year. Okay. Because next year, I feel like the best option for him would probably be the Inspire 2. You know, it's going to have some obstacle avoidance. It's going to have dual IMUs, a little bit of redundancy. But remember, guys, that if you're going to be flying 60-story buildings, if there are other 60-story buildings around, you may have some issues with GPS. Like it's just, you know, mm-hmm. between two tall buildings, if your signal is bouncing off between them, it can be really bad. So it also depends on how much interference is in the way, uh, which is why, again, I think the Inspire 2 is definitely the way to go if this is something for next year. The problem right now is if we had to do this job right now, I would say the Inspire 1 because of the Z3 if he is counting on obstacle avoidance, which, you know, it could help him, mm-hmm. it could also not help him. So your thought on that, to clarify, to make sure I understand, is that with the Z3, he can be a little bit further away from the building and just use the zoom. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. He could be a lot further away from the building, uh, which would, you know, have less opportunity for obstacles, obstructions, and errors. So and maybe even interferences. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. Yes, yeah. that's correct. Um, you know, with the X5, you know, you're going to get a much sharper image. Don't get me wrong, um, but you're going to be switching out lenses. You're going to get less flight time. You know, there are pros and cons. And I think the Z3 offers enough zoom that you're going to be able to, you know, get the images, the high definition images of the facade. My next question, though, is is what's really the uh, deliverable to the client. That's what I was just wondering. Be, What's the goal? Just yeah. looking for hairline fractures? Yeah, or? And, and is that really the right way to do it? Hmm. You know, because my next thing is, why aren't we flying a thermal up there to get a better idea of some cracks? You know, with the temperature deviation, you're going to be able to see things you normally wouldn't see with an you know EO camera. And if we're going to be really hyper efficient and we're actually going to scan 60 stories of a building, I hope this guy's charging at least like 20 grand because it's going to take a while. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, you should really be creating a super high dense 3D point cloud of the building so that they can see the thermal imagery. They can see the EO imagery and switch back and forth. And it's in mapping platform. So, yeah, it's going to need to, at least on the surface, it seems be a pretty sophisticated deliverable in order to be valuable. That's why I wanted to ask, you know, what the deliverable is because too there's a lot of times where people don't know what they don't know and they just want pictures right which is fine but you know if they are working with a civil engineer and they know about thermography and the infrared spectrum you know i think they might be more interested in utilizing a thermal system so let's say that let's take the pretense that the client does know about this then at that point i think the m600 may actually be Viable. Here's hmm. here's why. Okay. XT camera, the the radiometric XT, which is thermal, but it's mm-hmm. DJI's thermal camera. Right. And if we had a Z3 mounted on an M600, if we had both of those, then I would get an M600 shooting simultaneously. Yep. Yeah. Side by side. That'd be cool. Would be cool. It and would also be cool if DJI had some sort of program where you could control both cameras to be pointed at the same point. Which could be, pr- I mean, you could build that, right? I would assume somebody like John could build that. Um, Our buddy John. I'm sh- John fascinates me. I, he, he could build anything, so, <laughs> so I don't know. You and, you know, when you talk about what to price something like this, that's interesting as well because one of the ways that you figure out how to price something like this is how could they have it done besides a drone and what would that cost? And I don't know how they could do this. I mean, what do you, is it kind of like washing windows where you've got to send somebody down... I would imagine so. On cables slowly or something. I would imagine so. Or maybe so. a helicopter, either of which are going to be very expensive. Again, what's the deliverable? Are yeah. we just looking for a bunch of pictures so they can systematically go through the whole thing? Or are they creating a deliverable with an ortho mosaic 3D point cloud map where right. they can pull it up and zoom in super tight? Yeah. And, you know, and look at this stuff and then move along the building. So it's an organized, systematic approach to the deliverable. Right. So, so it could be as simple as going slowly along the facade in very, very high resolution, then they could slow it down and zoom in, even just using the, the technology, the end use technology, right? The application, and view like it that the platform way. to see it. Correct. Yeah. So that might be another way that they could go about it, which probably would be less expensive, I would think. I don't know. Mm, I look at it as opportunity cost, because if you are just providing them images, 
you fly around the building, take a bunch of images and here you go. And that's 10 grand, you know, and like, you know, if you want images and thermal and you want me to make a map, that's 25,000, mm-hmm. you know, because you've got to have an ultra fast computer uploading all of that data and getting those maps done. It's going to take a lot more time. You're not going to be able to work on other things. So, but, and so I understand, and I know how you throw those numbers out and, and I'm sure people are actually, I don't know, either freaking out at that or really, really excited about that. They're going to go start talking to all the, the property managers of high rise buildings. <laughs> but if somebody from Albuquerque, say the Hyatt called you to come do this, that's what you would tell them. I mean, those prices are what you would say. Well, we're in a smaller market, so I'd probably only be able to get 15, but that's without researching how much it would cost to, you know, mm-hmm. to hire two guys to go up and down the building, which I would imagine would take a lot longer than you would think. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I, I would imagine to do what they need to do for something like that, you're at least a week, a couple of weeks. Yeah, I don't know. I was thinking, yeah, I was thinking like five to seven days for sure. Right. But, you know, with the drone, it's probably one day. And then deliverable, simple, next day. Deliverable, mm-hmm. point cloud, 72 hours. Right. So. Well, very interesting. I, I don't know. I just thought it was an interesting question. Uh, I wanted to get your perspective on. and it's a, it's a challenging question because here we are in a time where new technology has come out, better imaging sensors, better quality of cameras, yet we cannot upgrade the cameras. Like I, I still think the Z3 is the best for zooming in and looking at things because the amount of zoom that you have is actually pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, that being said, we can upgrade that camera to the Inspire 2, which has obstacle avoidance, which could potentially help him. Um, So it's kind of like we're in this interesting time, you know, and all this, again, changes the further we go along. I'm sure the X4S will be the Z4S soon, you know, having that new sensor with zoom. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be a big deal. Um, But, you know, it's just, again, Rob, interesting time. But interesting deliverable too. Uh, you yeah. know, when you are, when you are quote unquote living the drone life, what your clients want could be a reality of your presentation or could be, how do I say this? Um, could be an unforeseen consequence of your presentation. Meaning if mm. you were to never say anything about thermal or about creating a map to make it easier for them to interpret that data, you could take the pictures, send it to them, and then they never do anything with it, and then they never call you again. And it has nothing to do with you. It just right. has it has to do with the convenience to foresee the deliverable. Yeah, no, that's a great point. So that's a great point. You you need to educate the clients as to they they kind of know what they want, but they don't know the breadth of what you can give. Well, correct, too. And also, don't be nervous to be like, oh, that's uh, (laughs) (laughs) $25,000. I would be. (laughs) No one will ever buy from you if you say that. Like, You you can't care what package they choose because they're going to choose it for whatever reason. The only thing you can do is educate them as much as possible on the value, on the workflow, working through your deliverables because you are trying to add value to them in every place that you can. Mm -hmm. And if they choose the 5K package, package over the 25k package you cannot care you can't care because as soon as you do they're going to think something is wrong and you never want to give the impression that you're not giving your fullest Mm -hmm. like effort to provide whatever deliverable you agreed on because if the client thinks like oh he's half-assing it because i didn't pay him what he wanted to they're never going to hire you again so you know perception is reality in business especially in in the real world too so yeah no absolutely i mean obviously you'd like to sell the bigger package for the more the the most money but ultimately you're there to serve the client and and provide a great service and product to them. So yeah. that has to be your end goal. Besides, if you've sure. done a good enough job at explaining and educating and them seeing the value in the higher price packages, it'll sell itself. Right. So you just have to deal with conviction. Like you don't say like, hey, Rob, can I borrow $20,000? <laughs> like, well, and the reality is it may be that they only need the $5,000 version, right? Mm, the lower the yeah. lower version. So. Rob, can I? Can I hold some hands for you? I'll hit you back on the first, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> my brother. Good job. Thank you for not going where you could have gone with that. <laughs> that was good. It's all about how you say it. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> you know I mean? well, on that note, guys, um, thank you for listening. And if you have a question, please go to askdroneu.com. Send it in. We would love to get your question on the air. 
and we're still waiting for a great accent for a hat that we'd love to send you. We would love to send you a hat. Again, thanks, guys, for the reviews. If you found the podcast informative, valuable, or it helped you, please share it with someone else who likes drones. Please do that for us or leave us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you download podcasts. That's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You.